I wonder, oh, it is recording. Um, maybe I should get my microphone. Ne? There. Um, 14 minutes. I'm just going to check now. Um, I'm using the mic. So I just want to see whether it makes a huge difference or not. So here we go. All right. How are you, everybody? Well, my name is Leah, and I'm really, really excited to welcome you today. Today, I'm just going to share with you a mini what if. Um, this was inspired by a customer call that I had today. And what happened was the customer was pretty much advised to use a higher volume than they actually supposed to. So how did we fix that? Um, each cup that you use in the lab has a specific dead volume. So your supplier or manufacturer will be able to tell you um, for each cup what the dead volume should be. So remember the dead volume is important that your pipetta or probe doesn't crash into the cup. So it actually is a protective layer. That is a minimum required volume that you need in a cup. Over and above that, you have your sample volume, which is what you need to add on to the dead volume. And that is what the analyzer will actually be paid out. So your sample volume, depending on what analyzer you're using, some of them will draw out exactly the amount it requires. And some of them will have a little bit of an overdraw. And what it will do is as it pipettes into the cup, it will drop out exactly how much it needs. And it will uh, basically discard the rest of it, which is excess. So with this customer, what we had to do then is explain to them that with each test, you basically take the sample volume and add it to that specific cup's dead volume. So when you add the two together, that's the total volume that you need to have present in your cup for you to be able to run your essay. Now the question is, what do you have if you have two tests or three tests or actually a whole panel that you have to run on there? What you will do is the dead volume is per cup. So it's not that each essay that you have on there, if you have an individual essay that needs 210 as a total volume, say for example, the dead volume is 150. I'm just going to use that as an example um, in a two mil cup. So what you would do then is say the dead volume is 150 and the sample volume for that specific test is exactly 50 microliters. What you will have then is 150 plus the 50 gives you a total volume of 200 microliters. So for that one essay, you would need to put in exactly 200 microliters into the cup as a minimum volume for you to use. Some tests uh, or some analyzers, depending on the volume requirements, you might just want to add a little bit extra, maybe an extra 50 microliters. That's basically up to you. Okay. But the minimum volume, nothing less than 200 for that specific essay, as an example. Then the next essay could be a volume of about 20. The dead volume still remains 150. And with the 20 added on together gives you 170 microliters. That's exactly how much you would need for that essay to run. Now, let's say the two tests that I've just added, I'll call the first one test A and the second one test B. So test A has a volume of 50 and the B has 20, right? So the dead volume, so what you will do then is you don't now say, um, 150 plus the 50 which is now 200 together with the 150 plus the 20 which is 170 you don't add those together you add the 50 and the 20 together giving you a 70 because they're still in the same cup the dead volume is still 150 plus the 70 so you basically have 220 when you're running those two tests okay Let's